Hello friend, it's Mark out on the back 40. And in this episode, I'm gonna uh, grab the camera and go walk out into a bedding area right here. This is the northwest corner of my property. Uh, one of my better bedding areas, more consistent bedding areas. It's mid-March right now on the west side of Michigan. It's a very rare warm day. It's 67 degrees right now. Two days ago, the high was 28. There was snow on the ground. Today, it's 67 degrees, and all the snow is pretty much gone except for the big pile. So, so I'm gonna we're gonna hop back here in this bedding area, and I just want to show you what I did for some hinge cutting a few years ago. What it looks like now. What I would do for a bedding area now if I kind of got this all brand new. So, uh, stay tuned. So I am standing right now on the trail that goes right here. That is a trail where if you go back to the video of Janice hunting on opening day, she shot two bucks within, I think, 45 minutes of each other, and they both came right down this trail. And the blind, you can see, is right here. So that's uh, probably not even a 30-yard shot to right there. So, um, And why did the bucks come cruising down this trail right here? Well, this trail actually goes on the north side of the property and the bedding area right here. But that, that's the answer. This all right here, you can see how it's kind of thick in there? Just the look of it here. You know, it used to be all these pine trees like this. It was all solid pine trees. About five years ago, Jake Ehlinger came out here with Habitat 360. And he told me, hey, it's uh, way too open with all those pines up like that. They're too old now. You got to cut a bunch down and, and create little pockets. Those pockets will grow thick create some cover, side cover, overhead cover, and deer will start bedding in here. And that's exactly what they did. So kind of back to the plan I talked about earlier was developing a pattern. Step one was develop a bedding area. And that's what this is here. So I guess I just want to go walk back in here a second. I'll turn the camera around and I'll just start talking and maybe you'll pick up some things on to, what to try. Maybe some things not to try, what I would do different. Um, but if you got pines or any kind of an open type kind of area that you've identified on your big plan as a spot where I think that would be a good spot for them to bed, this is kind of how you do it. Okay, so that is our north blind. Here is the famous trail. So let's walk that trail a little bit. It basically to the left here is all the bedding area. So actually we can just stand right here and look up in the canopy right here. You can see how I left the, the pines here. There's pines there. There's a couple pines there. And then there's these pines right here. This used to all be pines, but, but I knocked down a bunch of them in this area. And now look how thick it is. Look at all the twigs and uh, stems that came up from all kinds of different uh, species of trees in here. And, and the structure that knocking all those pine trees down, see this, the, the big heavy stuff here, that stuff has been there about four or five years. That has created structure in here for stuff to grow around and create side cover immediately when I knocked it down. So that's kind of what happened. Now I'm gonna walk in here. I hope the video doesn't make you sick. Um, I'll try to keep it steady as I sit here and talk, but this is the trail. This is like the, the trail that uh, everything comes through for the most part. And it skirts right around the north edge of this bedding area. Again, I'll just, I'll just scan over here. See the, see, you can see that those three right there where the line, where the, the pine trees used to go. So maybe if I just kind of step right here and lift it up, you know, I did leave a couple in there um, for shade if they're in here in the summertime bedding, but you can see there's some grass in there too. So they'd like to sleep on that grass. What I think, my opinion, is that I know that there are guys who talk about this overhead cover. Like, see how this is hinge cut up high, how I did it up high like that, and then hinged it there? The idea is that they like to be underneath this cover right here, so they would bed under here. I think for deer in my area, that's not as important to them. Now, there are probably areas of the country, or actually areas right here around Michigan, that, that the deer love that overhead cover. They're attracted to it, but deer in my area aren't. They like side cover. So anything that's on the ground, like even a log like this, they would bet on just the other side of that. They would, they're much more attracted to side cover than they are to overhead cover. And what this is, is this is about a, probably from here over to the other side is maybe 30 yards. And then this is the east edge of it right here and it goes over that way and you can see maybe up tall up there the other pine tree 
that's probably 60 or 70 yards. So that's kind of the size that I cut out on the inside. So yeah, 30 by, call it 60. Cut all the trees down on the inside of this, tried to knock them down so that there was a lot of side cover. And then the sun is getting in here and making all this stuff grow. So this has been a very successful bedding area, very successful. And there are does and fawns in here all the time. And that's why the bucks during the rut cruise on this trail, right? It's going right here. And there's a big open field right there. That's only 20 yards away is a big open field to the north. And right along this edge, all down there, if there's any kind of a south wind, those guys come cruising through here because then they can smell all of this to see if there's any doe and heat in this area. And then they don't see anything here. They cut down on this trail. They pop out into that food plot and see if there's anything in the food plot. They go to the food plot on the other side through the little hourglass area there that I talked about in another video. See if there's anything on that side. And then they continue into the bedding area that is over further east on the property that I guess I can show at some point in time too. So, um, and then they cruise that area. So that's how those bucks come cruising through here. And that's why this North Blind was so successful for Janice this year. So let's, um, let's maybe dig a little bit. I'll go take a walk through here and just kind of show some more video. Okay, so I want to try and maybe get you a, a scope of the setup here. I'm just on the overhead. Out there is a field to the north of us. That's a big open field, and hopefully I've, I'm going to cut in a uh, overhead picture and show you what we're looking at here. Overhead field there. These trees that you see all laying down right here, that's that ribbon that goes all the way around the property that I talked about that kind of creates a visual barrier. And then from here to the sneak trail or the buck trail or the doe trail, here's the trail on the north side of the bedding to the left here. What is that, maybe 10 yards from there to there. And then about another 10 yards from the trail to where I guess the bedding circle or oval starts, okay? So that's kind of the scale as far as, you know, how big do you make these things and what do you do? You know, I think that's kind of a good point of reference for you right there. And then again, now I'm on the north side of the bedding area and you can see the taller trees way around the outside. You can see these four or five in the middle of it that I left up and all the thick, nasty stuff that has come up uh, on the inside. But it still has opening, right? There's still opening here where those guys, you know, they'll bed. And I, 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 I'll look back and see if I've got some video when there was snow in here so you can see where they actually bed. But I'll kind of walk through and show you the spots that I remember they would actually lay down in. And there's the rest of the trail that heads on the north side of the, of the bedding area. And I'm going to try to swing in here and see, and you can see where they die. Now they're heading in. Now we're heading into the bedding area where I cut everything down. And I don't know how good of a walk this is going to be, but actually it's not bad in the spring right now. So here's, again, heavy trail. They're coming right into the bedding area. So this, this is areas where they start to actually hit the ground. And I can tell you that I remember from um, previous videos, this log right here, they bed right up against the side of this log. So they're in here. And so then you start asking yourself, well, why are they in here? So up against this log here, that spot right there, um, up against these over here where these leaves are, They'll bed up along that area there, and there'll be one that'll, you know, there'll be one right in the middle here, but they, you know, there'll be four or five of them all spread out through here. But this is kind of the general areas. Again, right up against that log over there, they like to lay. So, so then you gotta ask yourself, well, why? Why do they like to lay there? And I would suggest if I get down here, you know, this is what they see. So there's visual side cover, I guess you call it, all around here. It's got some grass and open areas in it where it's comfortable to lay down. And if they need to get out of here, there's a ton of escape routes, right? I mean, they can, they can head all over the place because there's trails all over here that they can get out of here. So this is a very comfortable place for them and they like to hang out here. So here are, here are like the cuts I made. I mean, this is shoulder high right here. That one's a little over shoulder high. You know, and then when I cut all these down, one of the things I did try to do was to fell them, like from all around in a circle, I tried to get them to kind of all fall 
uh, together. So the tops would all be in the same spot because I thought that would create a really neat all, a circle, all in a great big circle of overhead cover. Then no matter what way the wind would blow, they would be comfortable on one side of this brush pile or not. But it didn't work out that way. <laughs> That's just not how it ended up, uh, they ended up using the space. So, um, so if I were to do it again, I would still cut all these pine trees down, but I would not do the overhead cover. I know that some guys are going to think differently, but to me, it, it just wasn't worth the effort because it's harder to push them over when they're up that tall. You don't have any physically, you don't have the leverage to push those darn trees over. So you have to cut them through more. It's just a little more dangerous and, they, and it takes longer for them to rot. Now it's up off the ground. And so it's going to take longer for that structure to rot and hit the ground. And I think I would rather have everything on the ground rot it away then i can start choosing what else i want to plant in here and, and manipulate it a little bit more so if i were to do it again that's just me i would not do the high hinge cuts i would do them down low and go for side cover side cover is what they care about right here in uh in west michigan where i live anyways and uh yeah so what else would i do different i do like the idea that uh of kind of having a a circle and a big oval area because they will hit different areas of this depending on the wind direction and i think that uh, that is something that i like i do like how this grew up in here and um other than that i mean i like how close it is to the food plot the food plot is right i mean it's right over there it's just you can almost see my truck the shininess of my truck right through there Right there. So, I mean, right now the food plot is 20, I'm 20 yards away, 25 yards away from the food plot. All right, do you get it? Have I hammered on it enough? You kind of get the idea. Like, just get into a spot, pick something that's maybe 30, 40 yards wide, maybe 60, 70 yards long, and just start cutting and dropping it down. Do drop it down in, in areas so that there are little openings like that. You want openings like that. You want them to have access to logs like this because they will bed up against those logs. Um, and then make sure that there's enough side cover that they feel really comfortable. And the other reason is not just for them to feel comfortable, but so that when you sneak like right over here, 30 yards is the, is the north line. We sneak down that line over there to get to the north blind, which is right over there. So that way, when there's this side cover also, they can't see you when you're getting into your blinds. So that is the anatomy of, I would say, our best bedding area. Okay, I'm over on the east side of our property now in the different bedding area that we put together. Again, we're facing north. There's a big field out there. All the bedding area through here. And then back over that way are the two micro plots in the north uh, or the sanctuary blind. So why am I here? I mean, this looks really boring, right? It's just a bunch of crap. But <laughs> same thing I want to show you here is that we went through and we cut a bunch of the trees. And you can see that I'd cut them up high. Again, if I did it different, I would cut them down low. But the ones I would say, um, you know, they, they bed through, especially that grass over there, they bed in that stuff. But this spot right here is actually... I confirmed, I know that this is a successful buck bedding spot. How do I know that? Um, last year, there was a nice eight point that I know was bedding in here. And depending on the wind, he would either head out north every night or he would head out to the south every night. And I've got, I would get probably five out of seven nights every week, I would have a picture of him on one of those two game cameras. So I know that this was his home. But uh, I didn't harvest this guy because I couldn't get to him. Um, but my neighbor did harvest him. And uh, it was a nice eight point, but the same day I got a nice 12 point. And so I guess I'm not too broken hearted about it, but that was a nice more mature buck. Um, but at least somebody here got him. So I was happy for that. The road, the road and the cars didn't get him. Um, but, uh, you know, why couldn't I get on him? Because I, I had to hunt right over there in that corner right there, and the wind would swirl. I guess I'll talk about wind some other time, but there was an impossible spot to hunt him. He was freaking smart, so smart. 
like he knew that the wind swirled so if i tried anybody tried hunting him over here when he came out of this thick stuff that the wind was swirling because of all the trees right there even even the south wind had come up over the top and swirl yeah he's so smart anyway so i just kind of wanted to show you you know this was a successful bed and uh, this one is at one that actually did have some overhead cover on it and some heavier structure overhead now is that why it was successful it might be um, I still don't think that I would do overhead cover again. I think just side cover would be good enough. But the, here's just kind of, I guess, maybe kind of a view of in the middle of a bedding area, what it looks like five years after you cut everything. It's not fun trying to walk through this. It's not fun. But you can see why there's so many rabbits and all that kind of stuff in here too. So, so here's, here's the buck bed, right? So if we just walk right over here, it looks like, yeah, you can see how something sleeps right on that too. It might be the buck depending on the wind. I mean, that buck might kind of go all over here. And they, they bed like, I don't know if you can see just on their side, a little oak tree, there's grass there. There's some up over there. Again, you see how thick this is. And, and if you can imagine in the fall, because you know, the, the I mean, the leaves grow. There's no leaves. Oh yeah, look at this right here. <laughs> think that's a bed I mean look how flat that grass is I don't know if the camera picks it up very well but I mean what a perfect spot right like I mean in the middle of all this junk there's a nice little grass spot and it's nice and flat I mean what a great bed for some deer but but all this all this thick stuff you can see under here it's marsh but when this gets leaves on it oh my gosh it's so thick in here like you just couldn't walk through here <laughs> it's just so thick and so in the summertime, do they like to be in here? Um, I'm not sure that summertime is when they want to be in here. Um, they spend, especially if you got antlers going, they don't want to be there. But when their ant, the velvet comes off, their antlers go hard and the pressure gets on, they dive into thick stuff like this. This is what makes them feel comfortable and this is what makes them feel secure. And so that's why this is here. It's not here for summer, it's not here for spring. It's not here for winter, although they do winter in here a little bit. This is here for fall, for hunting season. When they're looking for cover, and it's not just bucks looking for cover, but sometimes does are looking to get away from the bucks. So they come in here, and they run around in here and try and get away from the bucks, and it's pretty easy. You can see how thick it is. All right, so if we get right down in this spot, I mean, I am right on, I mean, this is his bed right here. You know, why does he like this spot? And I would say um, facing this direction is north and west, which a lot of times that's the way the wind is coming from. So he's got his nose that he can smell everything out in front of him. And then behind him right here is all this cover. Like nothing can sneak up on him from behind. Nothing can get to him from there. I mean, nothing can get through this stuff. So in his mind, his back is covered and his nose is protecting him from anything coming from the west or the north because the, he's going to get the wind. So it's a very secure spot for him. Um, it's very thick. Nobody comes through here. I don't even know if coyotes come cruising through here. I, I'm going to guess coyotes cruise around the outside of this because it's more open and there's trails. I don't think coyotes get down in this thick stuff to like cruise every day and cover ground. I mean, I think it'd be hard for them to get through here. It'd be really hard for a coyote to get through here. So probably that worst predator around here is a coyote other than human. He doesn't have to worry about that. He'd hear a human coming from a mile away because it's so thick. Um, it's just a really, really secure place for him. That's why I think he's here. It's secure. I just want to take a second to show you this area right here. It's a very small area that I have not done any hinge cutting. And you can see how open it is. So if I had done no hinge cutting on the property, 25 acres of mine, 27 acres, something like that, would be like this. So how many deer do you think would be on this property? How many deers would we, deers, oh my gosh, how many deer would we see if the whole property, you know, more than half the property was open like this? I would suggest not many. So getting out, I think I figured I cut down um, between three, three, 3,500 to 4,000 trees. That's how many, um, now these scotch pines I cut down uh, in that one summer. So yeah, it's a lot of work, but you just knock them down. The good thing is you don't really have to do anything with them. You knock them down and you just leave them. They just, they just leave them there. You don't have to move them around. You don't have to cut them up. You don't have to pile them up. You just leave them lay. 
and it turns into a deer oasis. Oh my. So those are my ideas on hinge cutting and building bedding areas. Now, a couple other things I'd like to mention about hinge cutting or just really knocking trees down in general. When I did this five years ago, and, uh, we had what I'll call an influx of rabbits and squirrels and <laughs> of prey. And, and, and what follows prey? Predators follow prey, right? So it was amazing how all of a sudden within two years of cutting all this stuff down, we had a ton of rabbits because there's, you know, food and clover all over the property for them too. The population exploded and now we're getting pictures of coyotes constantly, constantly all of a sudden getting pictures of coyotes. I even had two animals, predators that I've, I've never had on here before. Number one was bobcats. I had pictures for a few years of bobcats out here. And the thing I didn't even know Michigan had, I have, a, I think I have two pictures of a badger. I didn't even know that Michigan had badgers. Uh, but once I had the picture and asked a couple buddies who know way more than I do, uh, they're like, yeah, there's a few badgers around here. So, I mean, um, but what I also noticed is this year, now that's I think maybe year five since I did this, and you can see everything is starting to settle down a little bit more. Um, the perimeter, you know, the perimeter stuff used to be this tall, but now, gosh, it's it's almost like waist tall now. So I'm gonna have to do something there, but, um, but it's degrading. And I am not seeing nearly as many predators on this property as I did, you know, th two, three years ago when everything was pretty, f pretty fresh and established. So um, again, it's like, I guess the cycle of life, right? But you can see like this pile right here. I mean, this is a great rabbit pile. And uh, we have, I don't know, there's three or four different groups of guys that come out here and rabbit hunt. And, and I guess it's a pretty decent place to get some rabbits because you know, you got, a, you got a half mile long brush pile or gosh, a mile long brush pile going all right around the outside. Plus you've got, you know, piles like this all over the place from all the hinge cutting that you've done. I mean, if I turn around here like this, look at this pile over here too. So, I mean, it's just kind of a crazy rabbit place too. But, um, so if you like rabbits and you like rabbit hunting, man, your property is going to be great. So now that's all I got for this. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, throw them in the comments below. I'll answer them uh, before work some morning. And uh, otherwise, I appreciate you watching and uh, we'll be in touch.